So, you're looking to create a unique television setting for your next video, but you don't know what to do? <laughs> I don't know why that was evil. Anyway, it's a good thing to hit this video then because today we're looking at how to create a retro style television static all within After Effects using one simple clip starting right here. Now. So in After Effects, this is a shot right here that we have of just me kind of taking a camera and going all Dutch with it on these pile of Christmas lights. You know, this is good timing too. Uh, it's the week after Halloween when this video is dropping and I'm lit myself for Christmas and we are working with Christmas lights. So let's get lit for Christmas. Anyway, um, so this footage right here will be available um, in the description below uh, on a Google Drive where you can download yourself. And before we get into the uh, full tutorial of it, I just wanna show you real fast the composition settings. The width is 44.4 uh, by 2275 pixels, okay? The uh, first thing we wanna do is we wanna take uh, this layer right here, it's the only layer we have, and go to Effect, go down to Transition, and we go down to uh, CC Scale Wipe. So with CC Scale Wipe selected, you can see we have this little crosshair here on our composition. Now, if we just bring it to the left of the screen, just right off screen, about right there, and then we wanna take our stretch option and we want to stretch it all the way to about 100. Uh, you don't have to go all the way to 100, but around 100. Now you can see the stretch is going this way, but we want it to go uh, totally uh, diagonal or whatever. Um, so we can change, you can see here it says 50 degrees. We can change that to what, 90 I guess? No, that's, yeah, 90. Okay, so you can see there's nothing there. Um, and that's because these crosshairs are too far off screen. So we'll just grab this and just slowly bring it back until there. There you go, right there. So that's the look that we want right there. If we hit play, we can see we get these lights right here. For the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate that layer. So hit Control D. And then on the top layer, we're going to right mouse click, go to effects, go to distort, and then go to CC lens. Okay, so with CC lens, we want to set the size. It's on 50 right now. We want to set it to 90. And that's gonna give us this nice curvature effect that we have right here. And then we want to take that layer and set the blending mode to overlay. Now, if we hit play, you can see that we see just the straight lines that we already did. And now we're barely getting glimpses of that curvature line that we just applied on top with the overlay blending mode. Next, we wanna right mouse click, uh, go to new and then adjustment layer. And with this adjustment layer, we want to go to effect. We want to go to uh, distort. And then we wanna go down to, ah, my knee's itching. We wanna go down to, <laughs> to offset. And then we wanna go uh, right mouse click on our adjustment layer again, go to effect. And then we go to, what do we go to? What are we trying to go to? Oh yeah, we go to distort and then we go to CC lens again. So for CC lens, we want to change the uh, convergence to negative 200. And then for the size, we wanna go something up to like 250, 260. We'll go 260. You can see with this adjustment layer, we've taken our effect and we have distorted it to make it look like it's on an old TV screen, which will make it easier if you need to composite it to an old TV screen. All right, so the next thing is the layer that we have here, the middle layer where we have these curved lines uh, coming through. Uh, they're a little bit too curved. And what we wanna do now is we just need to scale that up. So we can actually just scale it up right here on the window. And I want to see this curve right here. Here, let me turn the background. See this curve, this green little curve right here. I want the top of it to just reach the edge of the screen right there. So with it sized up, you can see the effect is a lot nicer looking than what it was before. Now, I'm also going to size up our bottom layer, which is just our straight line layer, just a little bit, shift it over, just to kind of thicken out those lines a little bit. So for clarification, let's go ahead and name these layers. The bottom layer we're going to name straight static. And then the middle layer we'll rename uh, curved static. Okay, so next we're gonna select our straight static layer, go to effect, and then we're going to go to distort, and then go to turbulent displacement. Now we wanna change the displacement option from turbulent, we wanna change it to vertical displacement. We wanna change the amount from 50 to 200 and change the size to four. So it's gonna give us a nice bit of like television static noise to our uh, straight lines. Now, we also want to take our uh, evolution right here. We wanna hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And then we can go to the end of our shot, um, however long uh, you have it. And then we can just uh, move this circle around. We actually don't need to circle it around like that. If you want, you can see it's zero times 
plus zero degrees, um, we can just change the first zero to something like four, and we don't have to like spin round and round and round. So you can see that turbulent displacement really helps sell with the static look of those straight lines that are uh, jolting around. And that right there is the end of the effect for what we did for my sister's wedding. And you know, I'm happy with that. Um, but I do wanna throw y'all uh, a few other options that you can do with this that I find very cool. This obviously wasn't what we needed to do for the project that I did this for, but I, yeah, I just wanna show y'all some options. So if we select the straight static uh, layer uh, and we go to uh, right mouse click, go to effect, we can go to stylize, and then we can go to um, color impose. So this is, let's say you wanna speed up those lines right there without actually speeding up your footage, because if you speed up your footage, then you're losing the amount of duration. I know you obviously you could just duplicate the shot, but hey, that's a hassle. Um, so if you wanna speed it up without having to do that, we can go to color impose. We can set the relief from one to 125 to really separate those colors. And then for the direction, we can uh, click the stopwatch while holding alt. So we get our, uh, you know, our expressions, a uh, little table down here. And now we want to type in wiggle and we want to go to five comma 500. And from that, our shot is far more spastic if that's a look that you want. And with this wiggle effect, the nice thing is you can just adjust the numbers um, uh, if you want to slow it down or speed it up. For the wiggle uh, expression, if you don't know, I'm going to do my best to explain this just right off the top of my head. But the first number represents like the, the amount of times that the percentage of number that you put in happens per second. So the percentage number is 500. I'm assuming that's percentage. I'm not actually sure if it just represents a, a pixel or a point uh, or a degree, but we're just going to say percentage. So 500% total of movement with this direction wheel. And then per second, it's happening five times per second. So if we want to speed it up, we would, instead of five, we could go 50. And then that would speed up it tremendously. Okay, here's another cool thing that you can do with it. If you right mouse click, go to effect. Um, we go to stylize. Uh, I really like this. If we go to CC Kaleida. I, I, ka, ka, ka did, uh, it's definitely Kaleida, you know, like a kaleidoscope, but there's something in my mind saying, no, awesome. That's not actually the word. But, but I'm pretty sure it is because it makes a kaleidoscope look effect. Anyway, so what we can do here is this with this effect, you know, just play around with it. It's very awesome. If you're doing some crazy music video um, and you want this type of effect in the background for a green screen or just on a bunch of TVs in the room, who knows? So this right here is just the default. When I apply the effect, you're getting this like pretty crazy strobe light uh, effect. And that's with the mirroring set to flower. And the mirroring is where you really wanna uh, play around with it. You can play around with the size too. You can see these squares get smaller with the size and you get a lot more squares. But if we change it to like unfold, we can get just a bunch of these lines right here. If we change the size, something really small, we can get so many more static lines throughout our shot. And this right here is with the mirroring set to starfish. And again, you know, you get some, some trippy effects right there too. Another thing that you can play with besides the size is again, you have, uh, so if we go to a still where we really see those circles. So like right here, we have the rotation as well. So you see if we rotate it, uh, it does affect the shape of those circles as well. So you can add a wiggle expression to that rotation too. So as it's moving, uh, through the shot, it's also uh, spazzing out these circles right here. Kaleida, yeah. <laughs> so the CC Kaleida, you know, have fun with that. I just feel like that's really cool. I've never used it before, um, that effect, but I thought that was a cool little option to do with that. The last one I'm gonna show you is if we go, again, it's like the static, uh, the straight static layer as well. If we go to effect, stylize, um, and for the last one, we're going to go to CC Mr. Smoothie. We're gonna put the smoothness to 20, and then we're going to alt click the stopwatch for phase, and we're going to add a wiggle expression to this one as well, and it's going to be uh, five by 500 as well. And this gives you a nice, like, it makes me think of like 90s rock type music video, or like the White Stripes type music video, if you've seen Seven Nation Army music video. Kind of reminds me of that. Um, so yeah, there's probably a bunch of different things that you can do with this. The main point of this video, besides showing you the retro static aspect of it, is just to show you how many uh, cool stylistic things you can get by literally just a camera going like this 
to a pile of Christmas lights. So I hope that helped you out with whatever project you're working on. I realize this is a very specific type of effect, so maybe it didn't help you out too much, but at least maybe it inspired you uh, of an idea that you were just stuck on, you didn't know what to do. And now, now watching this video, you know, oh, I know what to do now. And it might not be this, it might be the exact opposite, but that's okay. That's how the creative process goes down. Anyway, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date with everything this uh, channel is dropping. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I am working on my short film right now. Uh, and I am attempting visual effects and after effects that I've never done before in my life. So as I'm doing those, I will be releasing tutorials of those said effects and they will be coming uh, quite soon. Um, but before then, uh, I'll continue to drop these brief, short little tutorials as I'm working on that film. But those tutorials will involve um, how to fly through a wormhole, um, how to film flying through a wormhole, um, advanced object removal, uh, advanced matte painting uh, within After Effects, uh, advanced hologram. There's a lot of hologram tutorials, but you know what? I'm gonna do one anyway. Um, what else? I have a whiteboard right there, a bunch of stuff. Uh, creating more life to slow camera movements. That one's interesting. That's, uh, I had to save my tail because I messed up on set, but I figured out a way in After Effects. Um, so yeah. I'm rambling now, and no one's probably watching up until this point, but that's okay. So, uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. God bless and peace.